In late April of 2019, the Global Speedrun Association hosted an event titled PACE 2019. This live, in-person event featured the finale of the organization's three speedrunning leagues for Super Mario 64, Super Mario Odyssey, and Celeste. The top four players of these online leagues would battle for the greatest shares of the tournament's prize pools. Today, we're going to look at the Celeste League, which featured a $5,000 developer-sponsored prize pool. The four Celeste speedrunners who qualified for the event were TGH, Fladervi, Chai Kitty, and myself. All four of these runners were potential world record contenders, so the competition would be incredibly tight. A week prior to pace, TGH had claimed the world record with a time of 27.50, and the pressure was on the other runners to match similar times in person and in front of a live audience. Thankfully, all of the other runners would deliver. The four-day event would feature some incredible races, but the Pace 2019 $5,000 Celeste tournament would only be the second most notable thing in Celeste speedrunning history that weekend. Even though the first, second, third, and fifth place Celeste Any% Present speedrunners were away competing at Xanadu Games, a very peculiar image was circulating amongst the Celeste speedrunning community. A final time of 27 minutes and 43 seconds. This would be a world record time by almost 7 seconds. We already know it wasn't one of the top 4 runners who got this record, so who achieved this incredible feat? You might think it would be the 4th place speedrunner, Nero X2, but that is not the case. In fact, the speedrunner who performed this run had no submitted time on the leaderboards. His name is Phoenix4k, and he is a really interesting speedrunner. While it has exploded in popularity in recent years, speedrunning is still a relatively niche hobby. As a result, tightly knit communities develop around it. Speedrunners often participate in their game's communities, sharing their progress and broadcasting their runs. Some do this to grow a community and possibly become famous, but most just want to submit runs and share their accomplishments with their friends. However, Phoenix was different. Phoenix would rarely share his personal best times. When he did upload his personal best runs on the speedrun.com leaderboards, he would frequently remove his submissions later, as when he deemed a personal best unsatisfactory, he would delete it from the leaderboards. While Phoenix did stream runs on Twitch, the majority of his best Celeste achievements were accomplished offline. So for most speedrunners and viewers, Phoenix 4K was not a well-known name, and he definitely was not in the conversation as a Celeste Any% percent world record contender. The only exception was a small group of top runners who Phoenix communicated with regularly. Many of these runners were aware of his runs and great skill at Celeste, as he had claimed to have unrecorded chapter world records, and many did not doubt these claims. From the snippets of Phoenix's gameplay that he did upload, his talent and dedication to the game was very evident. Many people in this group of top runners were aware that Phoenix was doing a massive offline grind in the month of April. His goal? the Celeste Any% percent world record. This would obviously be quite a feat, as the top Celeste runs are incredibly competitive, so the odds were certainly stacked against Phoenix. Well, on April 28th, 2019, Phoenix would shatter his goal, as he achieved a time of 27.43, which was submitted to the leaderboards and promptly verified. Phoenix was the Celeste Any% percent world record holder. A world record is obviously an incredible achievement, and usually it is an accomplishment that the runner is proud of. It's kind of like a virtual trophy that's displayed for everyone else to see. But Phoenix's run was really, really weird. Visually, the run featured a picture of a large green bird in the bottom right corner with the accompanying text, Long Live Archie. The run also had no timer. Usually speedrunners use a program called Live Split to time their speedruns. That wasn't present at all, and Celeste's in-game timer was also turned off. This was actually fine for leaderboards at the time. There was no rule stating you needed to have a timer on, as the game would still show you your final in-game time after completing the game. However, it was still weird, as almost no runners ran like this. Other than that, it was just a really fast Celeste speedrun. The audible portion of the speedrun was even more bizarre. The game audio was completely muted, and in its place was a variety of Grant McDonald's Ram Ranch music. 
I'm not going to play this music at all here, since it is incredibly inappropriate, but you might recognize this music series for its iconic line of 18 naked cowboys. If you know this song, you know how out of place it would be for a world record speedrun. Of course, this speedrun was uploaded to YouTube, but with this weird speedrun comes a weird title, as instead of naming it something like Celeste Any% speedrun in 2743, it was instead called Celeste Two Berries World Record. Phoenix categorized the speedrun not by its impressive feat in the Any% category, but rather by the fact that it collects two optional collectibles. Just for the record, Two Berries is obviously not a category that Celeste speedrunners attempt to run. Needless to say, this is not a speedrun that would go in a virtual trophy case. To the average person, it appeared that Phoenix was not at all proud of this speedrun. Because of the oddities surrounding this run, and the general community's lack of familiarity with Phoenix as a top runner, some community members decided to further investigate the run's legitimacy. And after less than 24 hours of investigation, it was concluded that this run was illegitimate. So, how did they arrive at this conclusion? Well, Celeste has collectible red berries. There are 175 of them in total, and while there are categories that collect these berries, the popular Any% percent category does not require any of these berries to be collected. We usually coincidentally get at least two berries, due to speed strats, one in the Celestial Resort, and one in the Summit. But other than that, these collectibles are ignored in the speedrun. However, for casual players, they can pick and choose what berries they collect, and the game helps them track their progress. Because if they pause the game, at the bottom of the screen there will be a berry indicator. There is a grey notch if a particular berry has not been collected yet. If the berry gets collected while the player is still in the level, the notch will be replaced with a red circle, indicating that the berry has been collected. If the player were to exit the level, and then re-enter from level select, the berry notch becomes a blue circle, indicating that the berry has already been collected in a previous session. In a speedrun, the runner will pause frequently in order to skip cutscenes. Specifically, at the very end of most chapters, the berry indicator will be visible as the player skips the final cutscene of the chapter. And for Phoenix's run, at the last chapter of the game, the summit, there was something... interesting. Did you see that? Let me pause it for you. There are actually two discrepancies here. First, there's a blue circle on a completely random berry. Not only is this a berry that Phoenix didn't collect in the video, but it is also highlighted blue, which means that it was collected in a previous session. And secondly, the berry that Phoenix did collect in the summit should be marked with a red circle, as it is on legitimate speedruns. However, even though the video shows Phoenix collecting this berry, there is still a grey notch in place of where the red circle should be. This leads us to believe that this speedrun is spliced. A splice is when a runner edits multiple speedruns together in order to remove mistakes and create a near-perfect speedrun. Now editing a run together isn't inherently cheating. Many of my favorite speedruns are segmented runs, which are literally spliced runs that show off speedrun strategies that would be very hard to achieve under normal circumstances. However, submitting a speedrun like this to a leaderboard and trying to pass it off as a normal speedrun is unacceptable. Speedrunners will attempt the same speedrun for countless hours just to find mistakes in the last stretch of the run. This is a frustrating but normal part of the process for world record perfection. Editing your way around these mistakes might create an easier avenue for a satisfying end product, but it destroys fair competition in the process. Splicing is one of the most common forms of cheating across almost all speedrunning games, and it is possibly the worst thing that a speedrunner can do. Given these discrepancies in Phoenix's video, the only logical conclusion is that this speedrun is spliced. The footage we see at the start of the summit has to be a different run from the footage we see at the end of the summit, as otherwise these berry counts would line up. And after even more investigation, moderators noticed something else very strange about the run. Remember how there was a giant green bird in the bottom right corner of Phoenix's screen? Believe it or not, this bird was complicit in Phoenix's cheating scheme. Normally, when you unlock a new checkpoint for the first time, a save icon is displayed in the bottom right corner, 
showing the player that their save file has been updated. However, this only happens if this is the player's first time entering the screen. If a runner were to be splicing a speedrun together, and they were on a save file where they had already beaten the level, the save icon would not be displayed. The fact that this portion of the screen was covered leads us to believe that this save icon did not appear when it should have at points in Phoenix's run. This was not hard proof like the berries, but it was incredibly compelling evidence that this run was beyond suspicious. One day after the run was verified, moderators officially announced that this speedrun was illegitimate. This was confirmed later when Phoenix would admit to splicing. As a result, the run was removed from the leaderboards, and Phoenix was given a 6 month leaderboard ban. Even when this ban was removed, Phoenix's runs would be dealt with extra scrutiny, requiring the in-game timer, audio, and for their run to be verified by multiple moderators. Because of this fake run briefly slipping onto the leaderboards, some new rules were introduced that applied to all new speedruns. An in-game timer was required to be on screen at all times, and the bottom right corner of the screen could not be obstructed, so the save icon would always be visible. 99% of Celeste speedruns already followed these rules, so adding these was more of a formality over anything else. Later on, Phoenix would achieve a legitimate, verifiable 2749. Even though his ban has been lifted for many months now, Phoenix has not submitted this run, and it is unknown whether he has intentions to publicly return to Celeste speedrunning. Phoenix was undoubtedly a skilled speedrunner, but this event essentially ended his career as a Celeste speedrunner, and unlike an actual Phoenix, he would stay dormant and rest in the ashes of his cheated speedrun. Thanks for watching.